We're going to rank every run-first offense right now. So the last time I did a tier list video, y'all really liked it. I mean, y'all really, seriously, freaking loved that video. I can't say enough good things about all the positive feedback I got by I got from that video. So I thought, you know what? We are going to do another video, but this time, because a lot of y'all didn't like the that I didn't include all these run first the schemes, we're doing run first videos. Let's do it now. You can do it! So the first thing we have to do is we have to talk about what offenses are going to be on the tier list. And don't worry, I have it for you right now. We've got the wishbone. We've got the wing T. We've got the double wing. We've got the flex bone. We've got the slot T. We've got <laughs> the ham bone. I'm sorry. That's just funny. We've got the eye. And then we've got the power eye. And we're going to be ranking these on a system of face melter to God tier to okay to middle school to youth to just punt every down. So let's get into it. So the first one we're going to go with is we're going to go with the, the flex bone. Okay. A lot of y'all got a little bit upset with me when I talked about the flex bone not being a run and shoot kind of offense. It's like you need to have a quarterback for that and stuff like that. And y'all are like, hey, you need a quarterback for the air raid. You need a quarterback for the run and shoot. You need a quarterback for the spread. And you're absolutely right. But you need to have a quarterback that is able to make the right calls because a lot of the flex bone teams and coaches that I've talked to, they have their guys, you know, make the calls at the line of scrimmage doing the same thing as the spread teams. And they have to be able to make make quick decisions almost to a T what air raid and running shoot quarterbacks have to do is the same thing with the flex bone. But for some reason y'all get your panties in a wad when I'm talking about that. So we're not going to do it. Now you, you may be wondering, Hey, what the heck is the flex bone? I don't know what the flex bone is. I'm going to show you some cutups of the flex bone and show you why I actually like the flex bone before I rate where this goes in the face melter to punt every down. So the flex bone is a nice offense. You have three backs in the backfield spread out. You have the threat of four verts, and you're reading two people so that someone's always going to be open if you make the correct read. But there's the thing. You have got to make the correct read. It's the same thing for every other pass-happy offense where a lot of y'all don't want to give credit to. You have to make the right read. You're putting a lot of stuff on the quarterback, but that's beside the point. Let's get where, where does it rank? Where does the flex bone, the joker, because you don't know if you're going to get a flex bone team that throws the ball a lot, that runs misdirection, or runs the legit flex bone offense option offense. Where would I put that? I'm going to put it right here. Decent to run to the high school level. It is okay to run at the high school level. I've gone up against other high school teams that have run it. It is really good. This is where I would rank it, okay? So let's get to the next one. Now, I'm going to be honest. The ham bone, I'm sorry. I just freaking love this thing. The ham bone is something I, I discovered while I was researching the run and shoot, and I stumbled upon Manny Man Manzai. God, I'm butchering his name. I'm sorry, guys, if you're watching that. But he he combined the jet sweep with the run and shoot. It's the 1985 um Look, I'm, I'm going to show you right here. It's the 1985 Georgia Southern. This is all I have got right here that I have I have found. This is it. There's no cut-ups or anything like that on Google, on YouTube. So, But I liked it because it's combining the flex bone, the option, with the jet sweep, which I think is unbelievable. So where would I rate this? I, well, I'm going to be honest. I mean, since there's nothing there for it, I am going to go, uh, you know, punt every play. You have to. There's nothing out there to do it. You're going to have, if you decide to run it, you're going to be one of the few this is what we're doing right here. Now, growing up, I was a huge Wishbone fan. Both the TV show with the dog and the offense. Because growing up, my father had a lot of old games. And we used to watch a lot of the old Oklahoma, Alabama, uh, Texas games where it was just straight up black and white Wishbone type offense. And here's some cut-ups from normal teams now. When I say normal, I'm talking about teams in, in this day and age running it. And it's something beautiful to watch when they are working. So the wishbone, you have three backs in there. It's not like the flex bone. They're right behind the quarterback. You don't know which way it's going to go. It is a thing of beauty when you're doing it because you can also run the option teams, overplay one side. If you have a running quarterback like this team does, it is something very disgusting. You can do a lot of things out of it. You can be a power style uh, run team. You can be an option run team. You can, I mean, look at this. This is unbelievable right here. You're neutralizing the field. It is something beautiful to behold when teams are really good at it. 
And that is the great thing about this offense. It, it set the world on fire back in the 50s and 60s. But do people run it that much? Should you run it? Where does this rank? Where do, Is it a face melter? I don't think it's a face melter because it can be born and you only have that one threat right there that can go deep. Can you score a lot of points? Hell yeah, you can, man. Is it is it difficult to defend? Hell yeah, it is. We went up against a, wishbone, a couple of wishbone teams when I was the defensive side of the ball. And it was a struggle. I'm going to I'm gonna say this, and I'm going to say this with, with without any malice in my heart, and I'm not being a smartass. This is God tier. This is a God tier offense that if you run it to perfection and actually incorporate the option into it at the high school level, you're going to dominate people because defensive coaches don't know what the hell to do to stop it. That is why it's God tier. Now, the next one is we're going to talk about something that I hope to God they don't hunt me down and, and beat me to an inch of my life. This is this offense is something so secretive that it, the run and shoot people just laugh at it, talking about how closed up they are and they can't believe that they're not sharing everything. What what am I talking about? I am talking about the slot T offense. Now the slot T offense, I'm gonna be honest. I I find it very difficult to find stuff on it. The only thing I can find on the internet on YouTube is like this stuff right here, these really crappy cut-ups that someone in the seventh grade made. But what I love about it is the multiple handoffs. So you're combining the single wing with the wing T when you're running the slot T. And look at that dude go. He's churning up field. The defense has no idea where the ball's at. You're, you're playing misdirection right there. You're really messing with the defense's eyes. A lot of kids are awful at it. So where would I rank them? Where would I rank this offense right now in, in the tier list? I'm going to be honest. I fear for my family's safety and everything like that. I'm going to uh, face melt. Face melt. Please don't hurt me. I'm sorry, slot T guys. Please do not. I love you. Now, a lot of guys gave me a, a, some some crap when I talked about the double wing and how it was really a fat man. You know, foot to foot, no cracks, can't see anything. It's just a wave of bodies coming at you over and over again throughout the entire game. And they said, you know what? That that hurt me. That hurt me personally. I'm not that fat. Stop the cap. <laughs> Look, we all know the people that love the single wing. They were they, they were big. They were big people, and that's okay. Everybody loves big people. I'm a big person. It, it, it's okay, guys. So don't get offended when I when I use fat bastard as 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 your icon. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. Where would I rank it at? And on the tier list, is it a face melter? Hell no, it's not a face melter. Those things chew up clock. This is a three yards and a cloud of dust type offense. All right, you're you're just gonna piss off the defense and the opposing team. You're gonna work it around where you they're like, oh crap, we finally have the ball. We have to do something. And now, let me show you what it looks like because it is it is unbelievable the type of just grit you have to have to run this offense and to be an offensive play caller at the double the double wing system. Now, I'll be honest, when I found these highlights, I did not know this was going to be a big guy in the middle of the huddle going crazy. That's just, that's just the the luck of the draw. I didn't do that on purpose. So look at look at this. This is the sing, the the double wing. You don't know where the ball is going. It's a bunch of bodies everywhere, foot to foot. Everybody is just mashing. It is a very violent. I hate that little waddle right there. The quarterback even turns into a lead blocker. It's 11 people blocking, 11. That is why a lot of people like this kind of offense. And I totally get that. You know, this is a I'm a, we're going to put you in a phone booth and we're just going to maul you the entire game, wear you down, and you're just going to hate life for the entire game. So where would I rank this? Where on the tier list does this go? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest, guys. To me, this right here is go back to middle school. This is middle school ball. This is for when you just want to go up. You've got dudes. They've got dudes. We're going to mash them. This is what this offense is to me in this tier list. Please don't come at me. I love you. I will take you out to, for lunch. I promise I want to pick your brain. Just don't, don't, don't punch me. Now, I got a lot of flack when I showed the eye. I called it the power eye. I showed one little clip of uh, Nebraska running it, and then everybody lost their mind saying, does this guy know offense? Wait, why is he calling the normal eye the power eye? Screw this dude. He sucks. And I totally understand that. I, I, I fumbled the bag, as the kids say. That is my fault. There is a difference between the eye and the power eye. Do I 
Do I know? Do I care? Not really, but I know there's a difference. And I know when you guys, you you Karens of run first offenses, when you make when you make that mistake, you get really uptight. So I, I apologize. And if, for those people that watched the last tier list, uh, something will pop up right here if you want to see that. And you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm going to show you the true I formation ran by the best I team that has ever happened in a while. Stanford. So here's a clip. The eye makes it, it, there's a fullback and a tailback lined up right behind the quarterback. That's what makes the eye the eye. And I'm telling you right now, man, this play is a thing of beauty. Look at this. It's power from the eye. Great play. I know a lot of teams get upset when I made that. A lot of coaches got upset when I made that distinction. I am sorry, guys. That is on me. I will never make that thing again, I promise. Where do they rank, though? Where do they rank in the tier system? Where does the I rank? I'm going to be completely honest, guys, okay? Please, please, I coaches, don't get mad at me. This is youth ball. To me, this signifies the youth ball. Why? Because you're going to put your fastest kid at the back. You're going to run toss sweeps to the right and to the left. He's going to outrun everybody, and you're going to think you're a freaking genius because you did that. That is why it's a youth ball only. Now, that that I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really, really sorry, but it's the truth. Let's go to the next one. Now, the power eye. What makes the power eye better than the eye formation? To me, it's that guy in the back. It's like a sniffer. You got the eye, and then you have the sniffer right behind him. He is going to kick out. He is going to cut. He's going to do a lot of different things. Yeah, Whoever saw the eye formation, and he was like, you know what? I like that. I like the downhill running game, but you know what this formation needs more of? Needs more bodies in the backfield. I'm going to get some guy back there, and he's gonna, we're going to have a double fullbacks in the backfield. And if you're wondering what it is, let's look at a couple of plays and a couple of cut-ups to see. And I'm going to be honest. I YouTubed Power Eye Formation. This is the only clip I saw. And to me, guys, I know, full disclosure, it looks like the eye. That, to me, looks like the eye with a really good running back, okay? I mean, he's out. He, he It's a thing of beauty. I promise you when everything's blocked up like that, it is great. It looks good and everything. So where would I rank this at? I'm going to be completely honest. The power eye is pretty good. I would rank it. I would rank it if you had the bodies and everything like that and you didn't want to go single wing because single wing's its own beast. Decent to run at the high school level. Because you, you will have a lot of defensive coaches crap their pants because they don't want to defend the power eye because of that extra body. They put more uh, bodies in the box, and you can kind of go deep on them. I like it. I like it. Now, I got a lot of flack for the wing tee. Everybody was like, I can't believe it. I'm going to be honest. Okay, this is full disclosure. It's still pun every down. 